Hi, I'm Randy Packard. I'm a professor here at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, and I'm sitting in the director's office at the Institute of the History of Medicine with my colleague, Kristen moore Sheely. Together, Kristen and I are going to be your guides for this online course on the history of biomedicine and its consequences. The Institute of the History of Medicine was created in 1929 by Dr. William Henry Welch, the first dean of the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. The Institute is home to the Department of the History of Medicine and has been ground zero for the study of the history of medicine in the United States since it opened. We love teaching here in the historical buildings of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. They form a warm and rich environment well suited to exploring the past and its relevance to the practice of medicine in the present. This course too will work to develop an intimate environment, class size of no more than 15 students. Together, we will work to refine our skills of historical analysis and situate the development of biomedicine in its historical context. When we look at the history of medicine, we look beyond the kind of knowledge generated in places like the Johns Hopkins Hospital to include many different sources and approaches to health and healing in the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries. Our goal in this course is not to trace how we got to be so smart compared with people of a few generations ago. Rather, we want to treat the past with some respect and understand it as a repository of ideas and practices about health and the body, very different from those that we hold in the present day. We want to appreciate how health providers, medical scientists, and patients in earlier times understood and responded to changing health threats. So, for example, we will be studying the changing epidemiology and social meanings of disease, we will explore how public health infrastructure began to pivot as the burden of disease shifted from acute infectious diseases like tuberculosis, polio, and yellow fever to chronic non-communicable diseases like cancer, cardiovascular disease, and mental illness. We will also examine the different kinds of institutions that emerged as people organized responses to these and other changing threats to health. Much of this work was not done by doctors at all, but by public health workers, nurses, alternative healers, insurance and pharmaceutical companies, and everyday citizens in their own homes. We are also interested in how developments in medicine not only led to improvements in health, but also their wider impacts on society. For example, we will be looking at how the rise of bacteriology and parasitology reified ideas about racial difference. Since the management of health happens in such a wide variety of places and in the hands of such a diverse group of actors, we will be equally broad in our use of cases, examples, and sources for this class. For example, while many breakthroughs in medicine in the 20th and 21st century occurred in Europe and America, we will also look at the rise of tropical medicine and how knowledge of diseases like yellow fever, malaria, HIV, AIDS emerged from research conducted in the Caribbean, India and Africa. Over the next eight weeks, we're going to use the tools of historical analysis to understand the formation of biomedical knowledge, institutions, and practices from the late 19th century to the present day. Historical investigations not only offer us powerful glimpses into what it was like to live at a very different moment in time, it also provides a remarkable tool for understanding the contingency of the structures and intellectual frameworks that we currently inhabit. Each week, short lectures provide an overview of the key topics. We will examine a selection of secondary and primary sources to deepen our understanding of these topics and develop skills of historical analysis. We will collectively discuss the lectures and readings through different modalities of remote communication, such as voice threads and live talks. Randy and I will also hold regular office hours via Adobe Connect. Using these various technologies, we aim to create an intimate space where we build up our historical skills and knowledge together as a class. We hope to be able to work with you over the next several weeks to better understand the content and process of historical investigation in medicine. We look forward to meeting you and to having you meet each other. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email.